Hey everybody, it's MJ, Breathe, Move, Shine again with you. Really glad that you decided to check, uh, check us out here today. Um, so resilience is the theme today and I thought that we could do, um, in the background of us moving, first very actively and then secondly um, very restoratively, uh, you could know that what I'm going to be doing is addressing and aligning the chakras. That's why I have this prismatic colored blanket under me today. Um, I love the idea that a prism, if, when you shine light through it, it, it makes a, a rainbow of colors. And the chakras are these energy centers, you know, in our bodies, which uh, reflect a light, you know, and hopefully that prism that we reflect out is in alignment and all active. Um, it goes off course, things go off and on. And so it's really useful to, to tune the whole thing up once in a while. So let's do that today. You don't necessarily have to even know what's going on. It's, it's happening in the background, but just quickly, I wanted to um, just name uh, from the bottom to the top. <laughs> I'm gonna have my little cheat sheet here cause I like what I found here recently. Um, Root chakra muladhar is in two words, I am. Okay, uh, comfort, stability, energy. And then moving up um, is, is the color yellow. This is red, yellow, Shvaristana. And the two words are I feel. I think that's really interesting. So it's, it's our pleasure center, it's our desire, it's a, it's a creative center in the body. Um, then moving up into the yellow solar plexus, Manipura, the two words are I do. And so here we're talking about strength, personality, um, determination. And then up at three is uh, up, <laughs> three up here <laughs> is uh, Anahata, the green heart area. This is a love central here. So I love about acceptance, compassion, joy, sincerity. And then up into Vushud, uh, the two words are I speak, I talk. Um, this is sort of a bluish color, generally thought, communication, expression, the ability to um, articulate what we need to say um, clearly. And then right next door, oddly enough, is third eye Ajna. Uh, a different kind of clarity is what we have when our perception is true. In other words, not going into a storyline of that we create about what we see and experience. It's more like, well, I mean, I see... A, the facts of what I see and and leave it at that without getting too emotional about it. And then um, we move up into Sahasrara, which is up into the realms of a kind of more blissy consciousness, um, iridescent white. And so what I thought I'd do is to get all, all these aligned, if you can imagine that these centers are kind of little turbines in the body. And if I think about that, literally energy, I think, wow, what can I do to really get those turbines functioning in synchronicity in a really great way? And so as I was thinking about what to bring you today, I thought we would do a nice pranayam, some breath work. So what I'd like you to do now, thanks for coming, is have a seat on something. I always have a block or something under me. And then um, as you're doing that, just close your eyes for a moment to see if you can feel the sits bones connecting. And that was, that's our anchoring, our grounding um, point, that muladhar section, right, that we spoke of earlier. Really earthing yourself and connecting to earth. And then, um, and then we're gonna sort of take a ride up from there in, in this, around the spine up to the, uh, the, the next layer of the chakras. And I'm not even gonna name them. We're just gonna sort of glide up in our mind's eye, up all the way up to the top, from the bottom to the top of the head. All right, so I'm just gonna let you imagine those seven little turbines spinning and noticing if some of them are off and some of them are on, all right? And so what we'll do here is you can open your eyes so I can show you how we're gonna breathe. So we have this really firmly connected body to the earth and we're gonna send the arms up and lace the hands overhead, okay? And then, um, so I'm gonna reach the arms high without losing the stability that I've established down here in the sits bones and keep integrity of the spine nice and tall. And then we're gonna have, um, a breath which is fairly forceful. It's a diaphragmatic breathing in which we're gonna pump 
literally pump the diaphragm up and down to get the energy and the wind, as if you will, inside of us to get every all of those chakras uh, spinning in synchronicity. I hope some of this makes some sense to you guys, all right? So close your eyes and just listen um, to how the breath is gonna sound. It's an in-breath that's fairly, fairly significant and an out-breath that's fairly significant. So here's about what it sounds like. And if you'll notice, you're gonna see my belly kind of really coming in and out. That's really literally the diaphragm pumping so much so that the, you know, basically the, everything's coming forward and exhaling coming back. So we're, we'll really get into that here for a, probably a good solid minute. All right, so let's get started. Five more of those. Sip it in, sip it all the way in. Fill yourself up with the breath really big. Hold the breath in, keep the eyes closed, drawing all that energy way, way up like a vacuum, like a suction cup, all the way to the crown of the head and up. And then as you're ready, you'll release the hands and exhale. And the coolest part about that experience is, is really just to rest yourself for a moment and notice very quietly the difference of who was here when you first sat down and who's here now. And with any kind of luck, you're, you're just having a little more mm, a sense that you're really here is, is what's really powerful about using our breath and getting really back in. And so what we'll do is just sit for a few more seconds. And hopefully really just assimilate and drink in the benefits of that pranayama, that breath practice. Why we come to the mat is to move the body and the breath and our essence in one chunk. <laughs> Beautiful. You can start to open your eyes. Um, different people have different sensations after a, a little practice like that. Some people feel tingling. Some people feel really warmed up. Some people feel really relaxed. Some people get a little amped up. And it could be that whatever came for you is exactly what it is, what it is that you needed. All right. So um, I thought we would, our practice would be first very fairly active and then come down and find some restorative yin yoga poses that will help us to really round out um, our time together today. So I'm gonna move my things out of the way here and you can move your things out of the way. And what I'd like you to do is to first uh, lie down on your backs. And for those who like to have the props nearby, it's blocks are always useful somewhere along the way. So we'll lie down. And what I'd like you to do is because of what we just did with our seated practice, I'd like you to lengthen the spine even more. That's why we're gonna take advantage of gravity here and point the toes and then reach the arms overhead. And I'm gonna kind of crawl my legs away from my hips and then crawl the shoulders and the arms up away from my chest as well so that I can find a little more length in the spine. And then I'm really gonna activate the legs and activate the arms and feel that gentle but firm grip of fingers wrapping with the index fingers extended. The toes are very pointy. Had take a moment to notice where the shoulder blades are and slide them to a place that provides some comfort. And then now what I'd love you to do is 
send your awareness to the part of your belly that's below the navel center. And the next time that you in breath, could you poof that up really big? And then when you exhale, could you go ahead and let that surrender back down? So if you need to look and see what's going on in my body, that's not a bad idea. So an in-breath. And an exhale. Meantime, I'm really active in the arms and the legs. And I'm just going to enjoy that three or four more times. And I'm keeping the breath traveling in and out of the nose at this point. So one more in, really filling the abdomen. You're filling the lungs, but the diaphragm is pressing down to expand the belly. And then exhale, the diaphragm presses back up against the lungs to empty all the breath out. Nice, okay. All right, and then go ahead and release the arms down. And we're gonna send the legs in for a hug. And then we're going to extend the uh, legs really high. So we're going to do a tiny bit of core work in a way to con you know, keep that, uh, these energy centers really active. So we're working the, the core body for a little bit here. Uh, what we'll do is first extend the legs. If you need a little bit of a lift under your hips, you could use your hands. I'll demonstrate that here. All right, so we're really just going to bicycle. Uh, again, the idea of pumping the breath up and down. Now, for some reason, I always seem to like my feet to look like Barbie doll feet. <laughs> You'll notice that it's, it's, they're pointed, my feet are pointed, but my toes are flexed. That's just a thing I do, I don't know. You could choose to just have the toes pointed, and in fact, you could choose to have the feet flexed. Whatever feels really good. The main achievement that we'll have here is to really start moving a lot more breath and start to feel um, the abdominal muscles working for us. Okay. And then um, if it's possible for you to imagine, if you'd like to add a little more juice, we could bring the arms back. You know how this looks generally, I bet. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just bicycle and turn my body side to side. So opposite elbow to knee. And I'm definitely starting to feel the abdominal, the core working. <laughs> Nice. All right. So that'll get us started for our standing postures, which are coming right up. Let's go for two more on each side. Keep it real simple. Please breathe deeply. And then come back to center. We'll sneak the hands behind the thighs and start to roll up. We'll roll a few times. It's kind of nice on the grass. I hope you're outside, but you don't have to be. <laughs> okay. And then I'm going to come to a seat. And just for a little bit, I'm going to visit with boat pose. This is a standard issue, basic boat pose right here. Again, you could sneak hands behind. I'm going to tuck those shoulders and elbows down a little bit and just start to lift the feet. Okay. And then for some, it might be possible to lift both feet. For some, it might be possible to lift the arms out. So we'll just stay for a breath or two. Set your gaze on something that provides a little bit of stability for you. <laughs> nice. And then we'll go ahead and hug those legs in, crossing the ankles. And I'm gonna come right into a table shape. Okay. This is a standard issue, one of my favorites is we'll start with a table. Have, make sure your fingers are nice and wide, that your knees are under your hips, that your feet are nice and flat to the earth. And then as you exhale, you'll send the hips back. And then as you in breath, I'm gonna send the hips forward. Now, for some of you, the range may not be quite so dynamic, but for some, you know, maybe something like this, that's okay to get started. Ultimately, we'd love it to be as much of a sweep with the body forward and back as possible. And again, we're moving the breath. We're really in the business of that here today and always. <laughs> All right. And then find a little child's pose for a moment. Let the body sway a little bit side to side. And then start to send the gaze to the front of your mat. 
If you wouldn't mind, send the gaze to the back of your mat. Just I'd like you to orient yourself with where the front and the back of your mats are in relation to your body. So when we come up to a table shape, you have a pretty good sense of where the back is in the front. All right, nice, let's curl those toes under. Let's send the gaze to the knees and watch them come up the earth with an exhale. Nice, and then all I'm gonna do is send the hips back. Keep that nice deep bend in the knees and then straighten the legs. And then a little head shake. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, I'm gonna lift up the left leg just to get a nice reach going. This is optional if you're not there yet, that's okay too. Just could be a little bit of a lift. And then the right leg. And then exhaling down. And then I'm gonna take a little walk or a hop or skip to the front yard of my mat. And look for that forward fold here. A draping of the spine off the top of the hips. The head is heavy, the knees are bent. Softening the backs of the legs. Have a look at your feet, please. I'm always gonna always at least once talk about feet placement. We've got uh, three corners of our feet, two in the front and one in the back. We like those to really mm, be sticking, almost like suction cups to the earth. All right, float your hands to your low back. Slide the shoulder blades together. Wow, there's my sternum. <laughs> and then lengthen the arms. You could lace up the fingers if you like to. Then I'm gonna lift the spine to be parallel to the earth. That's that halfway lift thing we like to do. And then in breath, I'm gonna keep the hands back here to come to mountain pose. Nice. And as I come down with the hands, I'm gonna rinse behind the head. <sighs> Find my way to my heart center. Beautiful, let's start some moving. In breath, up, and exhale, folding. And then in breath, there's halfway lift. Exhale, send the gaze to the back of the mat. Send your right leg to the back of the mat. Beautiful. And we're gonna come right up into Crescent Warrior. Get right at it. Beautiful, lacing hands overhead. The other option is for hands at the waist. I'm gonna go ahead with hands high. Beautiful. And then I'm gonna come on down. I'm gonna keep the right hand to the earth and send the left arm up for a spin. And then exhale, come on back down. Bending the back leg a lot so I can hop the back leg forward. That's the right leg. Exhale into a fold. And in breath, come all the way tall. You're gonna see me on the opposite side this time. Here I go. <laughs> in breath, nice and big. Nice, exhale, fold. Lovely, in breath, halfway. Exhale, fold again. This time the left leg is gonna come back. And we're gonna press into the right foot to come nice and tall. Crescent warrior. Your arms can be any way that you love them to be. I'm really more concerned about how strong your legs are, both equally front and back. Beautiful. And then exhale, I'm gonna reframe the right foot and reach up the right arm nice and tall. And exhale, returns me back. Deeply bending the back knee so I can lift it and bring it forward. So I'm back at the front yard <laughs> into a forward fold. Beautiful. I'm gonna bend the knees and use the hamstrings to get back into mountain pose. And back home. Let's check out the other side again. In breath, exhale. In breath, halfway lift. Gonna be sending the right leg back. So you're gonna see me on the opposite side. Setting up for warrior two, the heels are lining up. The left leg is stacked in the front, peeling myself off the left thigh for warrior two. All right, reverse warrior. Beautiful, exhale, kind of like what we just did. But this time, you have the choice. You're gonna slide the left leg back. You have the choice of coming right to down face dog. 
or you have the choice of finding a chaturanga up face and then exhale right into down face two breaths might as well check out the toes nice and wide check out the fingers nice and wide and then navigate bending knees maybe a few of these first to end up walking or hopping to the front of the mat again and then the in breath inflates us all the way back up into mountain pose and exhaling here here comes the in breath here comes that out breath you're going to notice for forward folds i'm always going to bend these knees nice in breath and exhale this time left leg comes back warrior two legs check it out this knee and ankle are stacked and i'm going to swoop this arm way up send my gaze to the front hands see if i can conjure a little more bend in the front knee see if i can make sure that the back foot is pressing into the earth as much as the front and breathe the front arm comes up the back arm down lovely i use the exhale to start my gaze to that foot so i can figure out how to frame the front foot to slide the front leg back to find now if you like your chaturanga could be knee down really nice also let's linger in up face dog for a couple of breaths me the knees are going to come down going to send the hips back and here's my down face Adho Mukha beautiful okay this time we're going to raise up the right leg exhale elbow to knee and we'll do this a couple of times because why not <laughs> so the thing that's really fun about yoga is the body is taking a ride on the breath all right one more it's like being at an amusement park <laughs> all right so here comes that right leg once again warrior two legs means the heels are lined up and again peeling off the front thigh the hips are flashing to the sideways and my gaze is on the forward end let's reverse and have a smile and exhale that elbow and knee are going to meet up and automatically you'll notice the top arm really just wants to either reach tall or reach to the front to the other side of the mat a little bit nice and then we'll come on up on that in breath right into reverse yeah yeah exhale there's that front foot so i know where to put my hands so i can find the core so i can sneak that leg back so i can find the flow <laughs> and here's the dog <laughs> okay i'm gonna turn around pretend you didn't see that you stay right where you are <laughs> all righty left leg up exhale elbow knee in breath exhale really love the breath to be moving in and out of the nose but if your exhale wants to come out of your mouth i mostly i'm okay with that all right so we're going to land that foot frame it with the hands go ahead and send that left right heel down behind us <laughs> one of those heels <laughs> here we are in warrior two again but it's the first time in this moment just for the heck of it i'm going to stick the shape and then send my gaze behind me to see if anything's going to fall apart when i do that <laughs> yeah i'm going to ungrip the toes and ungrip the, the jaw line and then use an, an, an in breath to exalt our warrior lovely exhale see that elbow right in front of your face there that elbow is going to end up down here and it's either the, the top arm is reaching to the sky or the ceiling or maybe an opposite wall so the deal is with any kind of luck you're strong enough 
to not have an arm here, so I'm trying not to rely too much on that. Cool, here comes reverse again. Yay! Exhale, where's that front foot? Where's my hands? Here they are. I get strong here first, then I sneak that leg back. And I'll come down this way this time. Ah. For some reason it's really warming up here <laughs> all of a sudden. Okay, exhale, it's either to down face dog or to child's pose, your choice. We're gonna move a little bit more to really use uh, the, the yang portion of the practice, the very active portion. And then I'm, again, I'm gonna return to Adho Mukha Svanasana, down face dog. All right. I'd love, from here, I'd like you to um, really bend the knees a lot. Okay, and then back up. And as we're doing this a couple of times, I wonder, could you notice um, the same quality of spinal energy that you had when we were doing that, the, the prana work earlier? You know, feel into the places that need a little extra boost. And then as I send, soften the knees, I'm gonna to start to gently walk myself to the front mat. And again, I'm gonna land my hands on the low back. I'm gonna lace fingers up. You may too. And then really release forward. I like to think of this as a waterfall right here. <laughs> a waterfall of bones off the top of the hips. Cool. And then as I start to bend the knees a lot, <laughs> There is an option to use a block here. I'm a big fan of the block. Narrow setting between the knees and thighs for our chair pose, okay? I'm not really too concerned about arms at this point. I'm really concerned about the integrity of your legs. That press of the feet, those three corners that I spoke of earlier. We're engaging not only the backs of the legs, but the fronts, the sides, the, uh, the everywheres. Plus, <laughs> We're engaging that core strength again that we found a little bit earlier. And so if you feel at this point that you'd like to add the arms, you may. So we'll stay for three big breaths. I'm giving about 20% effort of a press into the block. You could do so with your knees touching if you like to. Very nice. I'm gonna stay in this awkward pose, Utkatasana and just start to send my arms wide. All right, and then I'm gonna notice what happens with the shoulder blades when they move forward and back. Yep. All right, and when the arms come back, the shoulder blades come together. And then they, your hands can hang out in the back there on your, on your low back. <laughs> and then finally, you can unbend those knees and find your forward fold. Cool, guys, all right. And then in breath, halfway lift. I'd love you to put your hands on your hips and physically press your hips away and lengthen the top of your head away from your hips. And then see if you could fire up the hamstrings to come tall instead of the low back. Now, I don't know where you are in your room or your outer space here, but send your gaze in a way so that you can step wide on your mat. And just do this a couple of times. Why? because it's fun, <laughs> okay. But your feet will sort of naturally land in a place where we can start to visit with, some people call it horse pose, some people call it goddess. The truth is we're all goddesses. <laughs> so how about this? Let's get really cool. Let's come into the horse pose, goddess pose. Let's find some pelvic tone here. Let's find that core again. See if we can uh, close your eyes and see all those spinners going inside of your body. And then open your eyes. We're going to use a little hand mudra here. Index fingers and thumbs in some schools. This is um, heart and mind space getting along in a really nice way. Sometimes they, they tussle with each other, right? <laughs> all right. So uh, right here, <laughs> right here and now, we're going to see if we can tune up the heart and mind space. Right. And in a way that's anahata. Right, and Sahasrara hanging out in a really nice place together. 
And if you're bold and beautiful and courageous, which you are anyways, maybe you could bend those knees a little bit more. Oh my goodness, anyone's legs feeling the heat? Yep, okay. So now we're gonna straighten the arms and release that, that finger mudras. Let the hands float down to the knees. I'm gonna to start to tuck the toes in. Beautiful, so that I can exhale and send an elbow or a, a shoulder <laughs> to an opposite knee in breath to the center. Before I was practicing yoga, I used to do this all the time in my office. I didn't even know. <laughs> Maybe they borrowed it from me, I don't know. Could be. And then back to center. Cool. And then the heels come back in and we're gonna come to a five-pointed star. Now we're gonna return to that, the pranayama that we did earlier, the uh, forceful inhale, exhale. And we're gonna lace those hands overhead and we're just gonna use 10 breaths. I'll let you count your own breaths. When you get to that last breath, draw it in. Draw it all the way in. Reach yourself really tall without harshing any parts of your body. Pretend you're trying to slide your feet toward each other. Engage the inner legs. Really power up the body. Hold that breath in. And exhale. <sighs> so very nice. Okay. So just a little bit of a hop to the center. Uh, and we'll do a little bit of stability and then we're going to go. And then we'll come down and rest. All right. So you're going to set a gaze from your stance, your tree pose, really strong mountain pose, mountain pose. And then I'm really just going to lift up that left leg. For some, this is enough right here. This, this could be it. Now, what I like to tell people is this is a sit-up. <laughs> it looks like I'm lifting my leg, but what I'm really doing is a sit-up. So when I think of it that way and I attach myself, my eyes to a gaze point, I'm kind of not thinking about it being balanced at all. Some people want to find the tree this way, Vrikshasana. Whatever your tree, hey, I got a lot of tree friends around here today. Okay, actually, I'm gonna come back to my heart. I'm gonna give it one more big breath in and a breath out to release it. Close my eyes for a second, check in, check in. All right, this time earthing the left foot, lifting the right. This could be it for you, this could be it. You know, why not? This could be it too, down here, but for me, <laughs> I'm going to try it out this way. I'm pressing this foot really deeply into the supporting leg. Beautiful. In the nose to the toes with the breath. I've got my gaze point to help stabilize me. And then I'm going to use the exhale to come out of the shape. Let's in breath nice and tall. Beautiful, let's end up back at the front of the mat. Go ahead and take a forward fold. Just crawl the feet out a little bit wider, maybe off the mat. Bend the knees a lot. Come down into frog pose briefly. And then in some elegant way, I'm gonna end up in the middle of my mat seated. <laughs> All right. Beautiful, okay. So, what I would like you to do is to come back to all four shape. And look to see where your feet are and let the toes just barely touch. Let the knees go to the edge of your mat. Send your gaze up and create the cow shape that we didn't do yet. We're gonna do that here. This is gonna be the beginning part of our bringing it all down for restoration. Exhale, here comes the cat shape. Just the difference is that we've created a V shape with the shins of our legs. Nice. Okay, and we're gonna reverse the shape that we did earlier, which is send the hips back maybe moving the hands forward. Check it out, my feet came up. 
So I'm just going to do this a couple of times. And as I'm doing so, I'm going to notice an extra kind of gravity sense that I'm down here in this way, closer to the earth. So when I come to child's pose, ultimately, it's either a block or a pile of hands under my forehead. So we're going to rest for a fairly bit, a, lot, a bit of time here, about a half a minute for the child's pose. It'd be lovely if you could set it up to be just absolutely a non-doing posture so that nothing feels like it has to hold anything. We let the bones set up the structure in the following shapes and the muscles dissolve around the bones and the fascia dissolve around the bones and all that connective tissue, the tendons, the ligaments, particularly in the hips when we're down here. It'd be really nice if you could feel the breath as it navigates by way of that diaphragm in resonant between your thighs, right, in a way. Lovely. For five more breaths. And then when you get to the bottom end of that, that fifth breath, just have a seat for a moment. Let your head come up last. Maybe keep the eyes closed. And just notice the body starting to slow down a bit. We're gonna visit child's pose again, but we're gonna add a twist, literally. Okay, so I'm still, I still have the V shape of legs. Um, I'm gonna wander the left arm forward doesn't matter just so you can see what I'm doing and then the opposite arm is going to sneak under that tunnel and I'm going to crawl it through until I get to a point where I can actually let everything go now some of us have really big shoulders or reasons that we're unable to come all the way down that's why it's really always good to have blocks and props nearby I'm going to use the block to support my head and it's awfully nice So in essence, we're, we're, we're finding the same benefits of the child's pose, but we're adding uh, a lovely spinal articulation and shoulder release and neck. See if you could make sure that your upper teeth and bottom teeth aren't touching. That you could turn your, your tongue into a little puddle. And as I mentioned earlier, could you see to it that all of the parts are arranged in a way that you don't have to do anything with them? That all the muscles are really just dissolving into that gravity that I mentioned earlier. Let's stay for a little bit more, what do you say? Five more breaths. And once again, I'm going to uh, gently return you to the idea of noticing those little seven turbines spinning, hopefully in synchronicity by now. And then uh, I'll slide that forward hand into a place under my shoulder where I can press it and as I come up, I'm, I'm just letting my head dangle. Ah. I'm, I'm hoping that you're feeling um, the benefit of that. We'll go visit the other side. So I'll turn around. And so the opposite arm reaches forward and we'll snake the other arm through the tunnel. 
propping yourself in any way that you that you need to. For a good bit of time here. Again, from the bottom to the top, the root is I am, and then I feel moving up the spine, I do. I love, I speak, I see, I understand. Just about a, 10 more breaths. Take your time with those 10 breaths. And when you get to the 10th breath, you'll, you'll come up again and really just having a little seat, a little assessment, checking back in. How am I feeling? Am I in a kind of a spacious place here? Am I feeling constriction? What am I feeling? What can I do to address that? So now from table pose, we're going to sink the hips forward and come all the way down to our elbows. And this Sphinx pose is a slightly different than the Sphinx pose that we practice in, a, in the yang variety, which is very active and wonderful and lovely. But in the yin practice, first thing I do is make sure the legs are nice and long and soft behind me. Even, check it out guys, curl the toes under, get those knees off the earth and see if you can feel a nice reachy quality going on there and then let the legs go. So that's the first thing and then See if you can elongate the spine and squirm your way away from the hips a bit. Check out where your elbows are, are. Maybe a little bit wider than shoulders actually. And then kind of great to have a block nearby for this, but your hands could work too. So rather than really active in the arms, check it out. So there's this, and then there's this. We get to be this. <laughs> it's really great. I, I call this um, a day at the beach pose, basically. <laughs> Here's your book, right? This is the yin version of Sphinx Pose. So we sink literally into the structure of the bones. The muscles are doing nothing. I'm setting it up so I can ultimately, check this out, let my head come down onto a block or anything that's laying around nearby. Hmm. So while you're lying here, I thought I would just do a little teeny teeny bit of a of a yoga nidra while you're lying down in your sphinx pose for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, starting with your toes, hopefully your eyes are closed and softly relaxing. Uh, the awareness to your toes, then that's all. And then send that awareness up the toes through the feet send that awareness up through the ankles and let it slide really slowly, maybe with the breath, all the way up the fronts of the legs. Take a little U-turn and go to the backs of the legs, that awareness. Just checking in, how's everybody doing? Then awareness is gonna slide back up the legs into the hips. Hips are junk drawers, so we might stay here for a little bit. Send awareness to the hips. Maybe let the, the breath move that awareness around inside the hip sockets a bit. And all that connective tissue around there and see if you may be able to invite some softness and release in some way there. And then sending that awareness through the pelvis, start at the tailbone right and then slide that all the way up really slowly up the spine it's like kind of bumpy right 
and then you get to where the ribs are and maybe some of that spinal awareness wraps around the ribs a little bit and then comes back around the ribs maybe tenderly reaches into the organs and the lungs and the heart and all that cool stuff that awareness slides up to the shoulders and the neck in our sphinx pose noticing the condition and the quality of the arms nice and heavy all the way to the fingertips and then that moves from the fingertips all the way back up the arms into the neck into the jawline and then all up into we're going to go inside the brain space <laughs> with awareness okay like circling inside of there like that kind of cool atomic little icon that kind of circling around <laughs> okay and let it rest in the mind space where it needs to and then just return to breath And then give yourself a little more oxygen, just enough to start to let the toes move a tiny bit. And then lift your head up off of whatever it's on. And then energize the arms a little bit. And then slide one hand and another hand so that you come up to a table shape. And then back into child's just for a moment just for a moment is a little bit of a counter pose to what we just did and then ultimately what we're going to do is come into our back come into our back all right so once you're able to come onto your back um, i'd like you to have a block nearby but it would be great if you could be near a wall also Okay, so you're going to come down to your back, and if you're near a wall, it'd be nice if it could be about 10 inches away from your bottom. If you're not near a wall and you have a block, don't worry about it if you don't, just have one nearby. But first, bending the knees, and then have an awareness of where the shoulder blades are, and see if you need to slide them in a better place. Okay. And then see if you can make sure that the spine is nice and long. Beautiful. So the left foot is either going to press into the wall, imagine that's a wall, or to the block, or to the floor. And then I'm going to extend the right leg nice and tall. Put a bend in that knee and place the ankle right here. So we're going to try to use the hands to hold the legs in place for a gentle pigeon pose, really gentle. Now, if you're against the wall, you can always adjust yourself away or closer to the wall if you need to. To make sure that you're benefiting in the hips, you'll feel a little bit of opening happening, but I'm using my hands and elbows on the floor to support my legs, so I don't have to hold much of anything at all. So for me, I'm gonna come up. Um, I notice mostly sacrum, the way the sacrum is landing to the floor. So if you could just check that out for a moment to see how the sacrum is connecting down to the earth, to the mat, to the floor, whatever it is. Okay. And then returning to the breath. And we'll stay here for a bit of time. And the, the reason that I like the yin postures is that we actually allow for a vivid notice of the mental formations. Because it turns out that when we're actually addressing fascia and connective tissue, not musculature much at all, or bones, um, and the release of those, it turns out that the body holds stuff. I think you all kind of know that. 
So if we know that, sometimes we're in a releasing position and something will get released. <laughs> and something might pop into view that you forgot about, or where did that come from? And if you feel okay about it, invite it in and just you know, sit down and have a little chat with it. So we'll take five more breaths on this side. And you'll take your time to deconstruct this side of the shape. Possibly just the feet both on the floor here. Some people notice a difference in the hips. Some people don't. Sensations coming. And then we'll switch to the opposite foot leg. For me, it's the right foot down, left leg high. Put a bend in the knee and placing ankle, big fat bone, by the way, is on the outside of that shin, that uh, calf bone. Um, and then I'm setting the hands up so that I don't have to hold much. And there's a pretty good chance that your, um, that your, your sacrum is completely rearranged <laughs> on, the, on the earth or the, the floor than it was before. There's a pretty good chance of that. That's okay. This is for me, for sure. So this time around, just do a kind of a global notice of every piece of your body. To see if there's something that's in resistance of letting go. And then we're not, we're not in the business of judging that, we're just in the business of noticing. So we'll be here for about 10 nice long more breaths. And then when you get to the end of that 10th breath, we'll take this shape apart and we'll move props out of the way. And we will extend the legs long. And a little bit like we did earlier in the practice, this time reaching the arms overhead, lacing up the fingers. I'm going to travel my, both of my feet over to the right corner of my mat and curl, maybe curl the uh, left ankle over top. And then the hands are also going to make it to the up, up end, the back end of your mat into the corner so that you look a bit like a crescent, a bit like a banana. It's called banana asana on the earth. Both hips are on the floor. And both shoulders are on the floor too. And so when we do this, we'll probably notice this really nice long expansion, literally through your armpits, all the way down the side body, down the hip, down to the ankles. So even if you'd like, you could take the right hand and make a, bra a bracelet around your left wrist and hold on to that. And then if you could please return to the idea of loosening the jaw and puddling your tongue. So give it one more nice big long breath. And then as you exhale, you'll travel back to center. Take a moment in the center, not hopping to the opposite side just yet. It's useful to realign the spine here. 
and then make that nice long shape again. This time feet are, are traveling over to the left, right ankle over, arms to the left, hands, and the left hand is making a bracelet on the right wrist. Now my experience of this physically is there's way more uh, reachy kind of feeling going on, on the right side. Um, you guys will stay there for a few more breaths. I'm going to come up. I just like you to know that um, if you, when we come to do a, an entire yin yoga practice, these postures will be held for quite a bit of time, three, four, five minutes. Um, and the benefits are profound, actually. So um, take a three more breaths where you are. And as you finish out that third breath, go ahead and roll all the way over to one side or other. Just to pick one side that you want to roll into. And then believe it or not, roll back to your back and keep your legs hugged in. And then roll to the other side. So we're going to rest in Shavasana for a bit of time. And when you hear my three chimes, you will know that it's time to come back to your seat. So finding your way to a most comfortable resting posture. Some people I know like to be on their bellies and I would encourage that if you feel safe and comfortable in that way. Otherwise, get yourself all cozied up on your backs. Again, the idea of there's no doing here, there's just letting the body be. And the only thing we're gonna do in this case is watch the breath move in and out of the body. It'll be kind of um, a resting meditation for our rest this time together. Yep. So we'll take five more breaths. Meet me back in your seat in a very comfortable way. And just be with the breath. Hands in a little nest on your lap. Spine nice and tall. Breath wide. Hands at the heart space. The eyes open a little bit. Let your gaze come to something. Doesn't matter what it is. All right and send a kind of a one-pointed focus to that. So we'll deeply breathe in here. And exhale, sigh. One more breath in. Exhale, sigh. 
Namaste, folks. Thank you so much for taking the time to spend with you in this way. And please keep coming. Um, I look forward to our visit again soon. Thank you. Namaste. Namaste.